the whole day together. And it's fine. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this video. Absolutely. So this is my friend Sarita, Glam by Sarita. She is a TV lover and a makeup glam guru. And she and I have been watching American Horror Story Apocalypse all season long. And it was really a crazy season. I know you've been really into this season. I, my hands are twitching right now. There's so much stuff that we have to go through. Let's get into this, get into this. apocalyptic season. Ooh, the end of the world. I'm excited for this. <laughs> and what's really unique about this one versus other American Horror Story seasons is that they actually pull from past seasons from season one, which was what, Murder House, mm -hmm. season three, Coven. So they kind of pull from these different seasons and put them all together in this apocalypse season, which was really fun because we've never gotten to see them yeah. before. You know, in all of American Horror Story, there's a, they're using the same actors. Mm -hmm. So it was so weird to see like, one actress playing a role and then coming in as a different character, but it's yeah. still the same person and they like... Sarah Paulson played the entire cast. Yeah. Let it be known. She played yeah. the entire cast of all seasons of American Horror Story. It was like really, interesting to see how they played all these different characters like wait mm -hmm. do they know that they all look alike mm -hmm. and they're like nope yeah they don't they don't see that yeah Just like Michael it. like Gallant is like actually your dad Tate Langdon no, no wrong person wrong person yeah. yeah so I thought that was really cool mm -hmm. and I mean that takes a lot of like acting skill mm -hmm. to be able yeah. to play so many different roles so let's talk a little bit about what this story was about yeah. so we're in this apocalyptic situation mm -hmm. it's the end of the world we're mm -hmm. finding out like that certain people that have, you know, either paid a lot of money or that maybe have really good genes are being shipped off to these, like, safe outposts. bunkers, yeah. outposts, mm -hmm. and everyone else is just like, fend for yourself, bye. Yeah. Wait, my favorite line is, don't leave me in Santa Monica, you bitch! <laughs> it is the best line ever. <laughs> Billy Eichner is a national treasure. We think that this is just a regular apocalyptic oh, show. Oh yeah, it's just a little apocalypse, you, yeah, know, you know, it's just nothing. Just in the world. Nothing crazy. But because we have all these different seasons coming into play, mm -hmm. things get crazy. Yeah, and we know that we start off the season, we know that Michael Langdon is the heart of it because the way that the show was advertised, promoted, and marketed is that the son of of Satan, the Antichrist himself, is the reason why this apocalypse happens. Really quick, in season one, uh, one of the main characters was raped by a ghost and they had this baby that ended up being, as we now learn in this mm -hmm. season, the Antichrist. Yes. Michael Lang did. The true diehard like American Horror Story fans are like, oh, I wanted to know what happened with this baby who was left in Constance Langdon's care by the end of season one. And I know you love Michael Langdon. He's your favorite character of what, the whole American Horror Story? He has to be one of my most favorite characters. But after a while, you know, he does get very frustrated and annoying. Billy Dean said it in season one that any child born of a human and of the spirit world is the Antichrist, right? You find out a lot about his mother figures in his life that really affect who he is. We see the season start off with this beautiful Pantene Pro V, oh, yeah. you know, looking, you know, Luscious man <laughs> who who can definitely take over the world. And the way he enters a room and the way that he um, speaks to people, we see that through episodes one to three, how he conducts himself. So you're set up really well this entire season thinking that you know him, but you really don't because through episodes four to like eight, you find out that he really is someone trying to find his group, his cult, his following, his people. He doesn't really know what he wants. And I thought that was interesting too because yeah, you would think this guy just like, he's the Antichrist, he should know what he to knows do. He has he all the be. answers. And it's funny because he ends up going to like these two tech nerds that are the ones that tell him, oh, you mm -hmm. should do this and you should do that. Yeah. And really, I guess when you think about it, he's He's just kind of listening to other people tell he's him what to do. He is a face of it. We see this vulnerable side. We see that he's not really this like granddaddy leader as we thought he would be. I think that's more shown in the end of episode nine where like you see him like talk to the cooperative and then into episode 10 and then a one episodes one to three are explained a little bit better that he has mm -hmm. this like bravado because he has Miss Mead by his side played by Kathy Bates who did a fantastic job this season. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like he gets that confidence when he has strong female presence around him but if he doesn't have someone by his side being his um guiding you know spirit he tends to fall flat yeah you know but i think that cody friend did a really good job in taking michael from a scared little boy 
to this really grand, you know, grand character that everyone can fear. You want to love Michael, you want to hate him, you want to kill him, you <laughs> want to be on the side of the witches, <laughs> but you can't because you're in love with him. <laughs> Me. <laughs> the one thing I will say though that I wish that we had gotten to see related to this character was the actual devil himself. I know, where's Big Daddy right? Devil? Where's the dad? Because we're not seeing and we haven't seen like this Big Daddy Devil come who he's always screaming at the entire season. It's very interesting because I feel like Chillin' Adventures of Sabrina did a much better job in bringing that like really satanic, um, natural, organic conversation into that world. I guess because we're only seeing just him, but even when he went to the Church of Satan, that was whack. That was flat. If the Chillin' Adventures of Sabrina can get that world better and that world spot on, I don't know why American Horror Story, which created this kind of um, monstrous world, and um, this character himself and this really good storyline and why didn't they have more of that? So it's a little yeah. disappointed. I feel like a lot of the story is about trying to bring back past witches mm -hmm. and trying to figure out like who is Michael? Like what was the reason for him even doing an apocalypse? Like there was no real purpose. We learned a lot about him but we never learned like what is his message? What like, why an apocalypse? Why an apocalypse? Why didn't he confirm with his father about it? I feel like he constantly listened to Mead, um, Jeff, Mutt. He listened to all these other people. Again, there is no reason for the apocalypse. It wasn't like his father came to him and said, and said do the apocalypse. Up. Yeah, like, it was an apocalypse. Like, again, to go back to Sabrina, Sabrina, even Riverdale, has done a really good job in bringing this like haunting character in to play the beast in Sabrina, that is like what I thought that should have been behind Michael the entire season. Mm -hmm. Where's his beast? Like he was doing this whole thing, but you didn't hear his dad, you didn't hear anything. I wanted to bathe in holy water after watching <laughs> some of those Sabrina episodes. So why didn't I feel that way for the Apocalypse? Which is about the Antichrist. <laughs> we don't really get the main story though till the very end where mm -hmm. we're like, okay, now we're wrapping things up. The way that the story was told was kind of interesting because it was like backwards. We ended up so far in a flashback, I think what they they try to do is go so far into the storyline that they end up right back to when the apocalypse hit. I feel like at the very beginning of the season he was like in charge and by the very end all of a sudden it was like oh he's like he's still he, not he fully like, in charge by really the end. Charge. When the witches were fighting Michael Langdon mm -hmm. like he just like I feel like they like surprised him and he was just like not prepared for it like when still still uncertain yeah like when Cordelia like stabs herself and he's like what no and I'm like, what do you yeah. mean no? Isn't that... I Isn't mean, that what you wanted? When Cordelia kills herself at the end of the season, everyone kind of knows that she was going to do that in order for Mallory to fully gain powers. Going off of that, talking more about Mallory. Yes. She was a really cool character. Oh, I love Mallory. I liked love her, her. storyline a lot because I felt like she kind of went on this journey that you like weren't expecting because mm -hmm. at first you think Mallory's just like this little like meek assistant for Coco mm -hmm. who's like this crazy character. I thought it was really <laughs> funny when they said that they gave Coco Madison's personality. Yes, uh, that was really good. The more that we found out about Mallory, I think my favorite episode is episode three where she like is standing there and she says, I don't know what I have inside of me. And it just opened up this floodgates of like, what is she? Is she an angel? Is she a witch? Are we going to be introduced to a whole new type of person that really shook Michael? I would love to know more about her and her origins because she's more powerful than any witch that we've ever seen mm -hmm. in yeah. Coven or in Apocalypse. I thought that it was like really interesting that she like was like so powerful and could do things pretty much the same mm -hmm. types of things that Michael Landon could do and no one else could do those because he was an antichrist. So mm -hmm. I wonder like does she have like a parallel yeah. type of background to him. People were speculating on the internet if she is a descendant of a Sakata, Lady Gaga's character in Rono. She was the first witch. If all the seasons connect, it'd be great for her to be like related to the first witch, like an original witch. They set Mallory up in such a way where she's so different that she was able to take a deer, bring it back to life, and turn it into a baby. Which other witch does that? Yeah. Not even Cordelia's weak ass. This entire <laughs> season could do that. She's too emotional to be the supreme. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's a good or bad thing. Cordelia and Michael are very similar in that sense because Cordelia needed Myrtle Snow in order to have that confidence for her powers. The same thing with Michael and Mead. Oh, yeah. He needed Miss Mead his entire step of the way, regardless if she was dead or alive. So I think that 
while this season of apocalypse was done very very well episodes seven and eight were a true disappointment i feel like <laughs> i mean it's slow i work yeah. in tv that was such a it was a really bad episode um because even then in episode seven they're like michael is running around the woods i'm like what is he doing in the woods like what is he doing like is that yeah, like it was like kind of like two filler episodes that just didn't really like give you much substance like yeah. substance like but the finale was crazy i guessed when that freaking guy came out oh. of nowhere and stabbed <gasps> mallory okay first of what? all Brock, this is a psa to you and billy eichner how dare you how dare you how dare you she was so close to ending everything and it, it, how dare you stay in santa monica it was so ironic because he wasn't supposed to be there literally he was like the variable that nobody the was prepared for season. ever since episode three everybody's just like so he has killed coco and he's just hanging out in the outpost until then and then he just comes back and then kills valerie i was like <gasps> Oh my god! I didn't see that coming either. I mean, people were talking about that. He's just like, so he's just chilling in there. The alarms never went off. He's just like in there. And like, Michael, like, I smell like more power. And he's like, you can smell this dusty ass person coming from outside <laughs> yeah. with radioactivity all over him. Exactly. Like, what is wrong with you, Michael? So Mallory goes back in time, runs him over with a car when he's, you know, a younger version of himself. Uh, Michael basically pleads with uh, Constance to take him back to Murder House, which we all know, if he dies on Murder House property, he becomes a ghost there. And um, he'll stay there and forever. Stay there forever. And we all knew what he did to all the other ghosts. He's part spirit, so like, of course he's gonna thrive over there. Like, he was manipulative mm -hmm. up until the end. And luckily Constance was like, no. She was like, go to hell. And actually, you know what else I just realized? Because they went and changed the whole timeline, now that means that everything that happened in Murder House and all the resolutions we got there, like with Tate and Violet, are completely gone. Those things didn't happen anymore. Michael Lennon is done. And now we finally get into this story. <laughs> oh, get it. No, I wanted him no, to live. I, I wanted him to live so bad. I thought he was gonna just come back. So we finally got to learn more about Timothy and Emily, who, if you guys remember, were at the very beginning of the season. They were like these two random people that were added to the bunker. Mm -hmm. I think because they had used 23andMe. Yeah, they had like the crazy ancestry. good genetics, which is, yeah. yeah. So they had crazy good genetics, mm -hmm. and they were like, okay, well, these people will probably be good for populating the Earth. Yeah, exactly. We were in the first, like, what, three episodes? Three and then episodes, they were kind of yeah. gone. And then they died. Because everything is reset, and everything's good, Timothy and Emily are still alive, and not in a bunker. They fall in love, and they have yeah. a baby, except that baby is crazy! Is the Antichrist. It's kind of weird to say that this kid is the Antichrist. But apparently he is yeah. because the birds, the crows, um, the, the killing the babysitter, killing the babysitter is very Michael Landon. But here's the thing: we have to remember that Michael Landon was born of human and spirit world. This kid is. I mean, unless something happened that we didn't get to see, where like maybe something similar to what happened in Murder House happened in this. The Church of Satan and Mead is came earlier, so Mead, you know, which is like she's very proud to be a devil mama, like. She now has another kid to take care of. It's kind of like this weird circle of like, everything's gonna happen no matter what. Like there's always gonna be this antichrist that's like supposed to come. Will they have to go and like defeat him again? Is mm -hmm. this kid's name Michael? Is this somebody else? Speaking of circles, I actually found it really interesting. I don't know if you remember a while ago, I think before Apocalypse was announced, Ryan Murphy put out this post that basically alludes that all the seasons of American Horror Story were related to the different circles of hell in Dante's Inferno. So a lot of people have been speculating and right after that then they announced Apocalypse. So um, so Nine Circles of Hell, Limbo, which is Murder House, which is kind of obvious. Yeah, that's an obvious Lust, one. he didn't have anything for that. He put Hotel as Gluttony. Greed is Freak Show, which kind of makes sense. Anger is Roanoke. I mean, that was a very, very angry season. So <laughs> yes, Heresy, Cult, Violence, they don't... Ryan Murphy says that that doesn't really have anything. I mean, they all are pretty violent. I think violent, they're all pretty so. violent. Fraud, which is Asylum, totally spot on. And Treachery, Coven. If it's going off of like, these are the nine circles of hell and these are the nine seasons, I would say, I think Apocalypse is definitely violence over lust. So maybe next seasons will have something to do with lust. Yeah. So if we're like talking theories. Or Michael comes back. <laughs> <laughs> just to hang out with you. <laughs> just to hang out with That's me. That's the whole season Tulsa. of American Horror Story Lust. <laughs> so now, what do you think for the next season of American Horror Story? Ryan Murphy will be kind of like 
crazy not to bring back Cody Fern because I think he definitely deserves his spot. He's earned his mm -hmm. spot. A lot of people were saying that he hasn't done like this um, Area 51 alien um, stuff yet, but he kind of did that with Asylum. Brace and Alma's kids from Asylum. We know that Evan Peter's character, they're like alien children with oh, his yeah. two wives. So I mean, like, where are they gonna come back? I think that could be a, definitely a potential for a season nine, bringing different connections from past seasons mm -hmm. and stuff, and maybe they like kind of teased us a little bit with some alien mm -hmm. stuff and now maybe season 9 would be like a full-blown alien yeah. invasion or something. Seeing that we know that a lot of the seasons are connected, we know that these are different storylines happening kind of in the same world. You see more of the characters, you find out things, that even small things like people are saying that Madison Montgomery is related to Dr. Montgomery from Murder House oh. and when she went back to Murder House, Billy Dean had something to say to her um, about it. You might be more connected to this house than you know along those lines. So. I think that there is a way that they're all connected. Maybe the next season will be another one just showing like literally how all the seasons are connected mm -hmm. in some way because that's cool yeah. when you see those like little through lines. So like they are in the all the same universe in different time, you know, in different times and we know that the warlocks exist, we know that witches exist, we know that they all can, some, not all of them, can travel in time which I think that is a really big thing to mention. Oh um, yeah, there's a lot of time travel that goes on. There's a lot on, of time so. travel. I mean, even the Anastasia storyline that they brought back, some people thought it was a stretch. But I think that was very interesting and made it a very American Horror Story. I think that when American Horror Story bleeds the line of things that you thought you knew would end to, but you curiously want to know what the end is. Like, people want to know what happened to the Black Dahlia. People want to know what happened to Anne Frank. Some people also want to know what happened to Anastasia and the Romanov family. So I feel like a lot of people, the whole point of American Horror, horror Story is to always have this like illusion of, uh, and this essence of mystery throughout mm -hmm. every season of being like, is this really real? Is this not real? You know, has this happened? Could it happen? It kind of eases that kind of curious mind that people who grew up being murderinos and watching all these cases always wanted to know. I am very, very curious to find out what they do in season nine, um, just because like, where are they gonna go? I think next season is the final season. So if this whole thing is the nine circles of hell, I feel like season nine has to go out with like a bang. It has to be crazy. It has to be crazy. Like, like all the crazy. stops. We did it. We did it. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming to entertain my foolishness. <laughs> now I feel fully satisfied. Oh. We'll have you come back another time and do like cool makeup. An actual like, like for, makeup look. Like for like a series of unfortunate events. <gasps> Stop. I mean, Esme is the only one that like, I mean Jacqueline maybe or Esme. No, Olivia. <gasps> yes. So basically, if you want to see Sarita come back and talk about a series of unfortunate events with me and also give us both Olivia <laughs> Caliban, so Madame makeup, Lulu's makeup, Madame Lulu look makeup from last looks, season. Then give this video a thumbs up. Let us know what you think about this season of American Horror Story. Which one's your favorite? Leave a comment down below. Which one's your favorite? You this already one? know the answer. <laughs> you this already one. know. Make sure to check out the description box below to check out Sarita's links. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button because I make new videos every week. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>